Good morning, Aruna. How are you? Hey, Bobby. I'm great. How are you? Good, good. Uh, just a second. I have to run and shut my door. Yeah, yeah, sure. So how are you? Is everything good? Yes, everything is going great. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen as usual because we have to talk about something exciting. So let me just get to the right screen. This is very exciting. So where am I going here? And then I'm going here, share my screen. Okay. So last week I got an email from um, Min talking about how the Linux Foundation is interested in possibly discussing how to use AI in documentation, which it was just an email from Min David and the head of strategic development at the Linux Foundation. Um, and I reached out to him and set up a meeting. His, his name is Robert Reeves. And I had a meeting with him last week. And he was, again, he's like a real bigwig in the Linux Foundation. He was completely blown away by what we had introduced to um, the mentees last week in so far as using AI and trying to do a workflow. So I have a meeting, another meeting with them right after this, which I, I love it if you could stay on and, and just- Yeah, yeah, I can stay. So what he wants or he envisions, and he was very excited. He, he was like floored and blown away by not only the fact that we're encouraging the group to use the um, AI tools, but that we actually assigned them something to try. <laughs> he was like <laughs> floored. So- <clears throat> I told him like we tried to, you know, see if this is going to work and we said for everybody to give it a try. So I'm hoping that um, in today's meeting at some point after we go through the stuff we have to go through, like trying to figure out the deliverables for each one of the um, groups, that we have time to see if people actually tried this. So a little things got a little confusing because Min set up another meeting, which is the one that's right after this. I don't think she knew he and I spoke and he and I have another meeting Thursday in which he wanted to see what our group came up with. So in today's meeting, when we talk about this um, opportunity, which is it, it, we might be um, organizing the user docs with AI and then introducing it to the Linux Foundation at their events too. So this is like a step above Hyperledger. It's an awesome opportunity. Great exposure for you guys. Um, and I'm very excited. Um, so that's what's going on with that. And I just wanted to give you a heads up before uh, the meeting. So what do you think? Did you think anybody tried it or played with it? Because we do have till Thursday. Um, and should we actually see if they want to? Or should you and I just try it? Uh, okay, so from my side, I have been using ChatGPT for a long time, using these prompts and all to actually document my code and write the readme files in my projects and a lot of things. So I have been playing. You always blow me away. I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually very useful, even even for like every small thing. It helps a lot. So I've been using these tools for quite a lot of time. So I don't know if others have tried or not, but I think uh, maybe Akanksha and and Tripur or Kajal has tried it out. I have to confirm so that. What, so what basically the goal is is to use these tools to automate user guides. So far down the road, like the ultimate goal is that when somebody updates their GitHub repository, wherever that, I'm gonna use an old term webhook, wherever that webhook is, it would automatically update. Okay. Which is down the road. But right now what they want is, they wanna be able to create user guides using AI quickly. So I had showed them the flow with, if you look at the screen, 
putting something in chat GBT, which again, I've been using it for, for months. As soon as it came out, I was like the first one signed up. I love it. I think it's awesome. Um, but I just learned about how to do the Pictionary and the Gamma. And I'm sure there's other programs for this that we could research or look into. So what they're actually asking us to do is kind of come up with a really good workflow that would create user documentation. So, you know, when you pick a template, the template would be a Hyperledger template, obviously. Um, and then you would just grab the template, put your documents uh, or put your words from chat GBT in, and either have a user doc or a presentation or something. And they'd like us to try to organize that. And we'll find out more in that next meeting after our meeting um, today. But what do you think about creating user guides for not just the Hyperledger, but for the Linux Foundation as a whole, not creating the user guides themselves, but creating the workflow with AI is basically the goal. I think that would be a very interesting thing to try out. And it's a, it's a great opportunity to explore different AI tools and also a huge opportunity for all of the mentees. So we should definitely try out and, you know, let others also know about it and they can try out from their end, end as well. So I think it's a great opportunity. And yes, I'd like exciting. to see. Yeah, I'd like to see what, you know, if in fact anybody has played with a workflow and tried to figure out how that workflow would manage um, user guides from the assignment last week. But then moving forward, I mean, I don't know what this Thursday is about, but if he wants us, I would like the mentees to explore these tools for user guides. I mean, after being in the meetings so often, they kind of already know what, what we're looking to do by the end of the summer. Sure, sure. I, I think uh, today, uh, some of them won't be able to join They said me because they are not well. I think uh, Victoria and Kajal, they won't be able to join. And I think rest, all of them will join. So I think we can ask them. And those who are not, uh, those who are unable to join, I will definitely con uh, connect with them over LinkedIn or an email. and ask them and let them know about this opportunity and like see if they have tried out some some of these ai tools or some other ai tools also so we can get their input as well like that and, and if robert reeves wants a meeting with thursday with other people to get involved i'd like to maybe have us meet wednesday at some point to go over what we're going to present to these people. If it's just him informally, we don't have to do that. But if he's bringing other people in, we should do that. And I think we'll find that out at 11. Uh, or whatever time it is for you, sorry. At the meeting after the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, it's act actually those AI tools make the work really, really easy. And if we can think of a I, really... I can't say how many times I use chat GPT to actually rearrange my points or like I just write some random points that come into my mind and I ask it to, you know, write it in the form yep. of a paragraph and it, it actually organizes things very beautifully and it helps me in writing blogs and everything. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, me too. I actually use it when I write courseware <laughs> to do the multiple choice questions for me. <laughs> I'm like, all right, here's my text. Give me 10 multiple choice questions with answers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually very really useful. All right, I just have to run and grab a cup of coffee before our meeting, so I will be right back, but that's great. So whatever flow you wanted to do for the meeting, just leave time to discuss this. If you want to do it first, if you want to do it last, whatever, but we should um, bring this up in the meeting. Okay, so for today's flow, and ask if on yeah I can just I'll summarize my call with Robert and then uh we'll see what what happens so I will be right back yeah yeah sure Bobby um I think we should wait for a few more minutes and let everyone join for two to three more minutes and let's see if everyone joins and then uh, we can start with the meet.
so i think uh, we have uh, jian luka and tripur in the call so for today's agenda we will just be going through the basic introductions and uh, list down the deliverables uh, so just uh, let me know if you have any any um, help needed or any uh, anything regarding the deliverables or framing the timeline for the upcoming weeks of each of your subgroups uh, so starting with uh, tripur uh, tripur you can go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know if uh, how is the task going on hi everyone uh, hey bobby uh, go in the uh, github read the docs okay i am back and i have my coffee hi bobby <laughs> Um, how is everybody? It's going good. Good, good. Okay, let's get to the screen. Okay, as usual, Arunima did a great job on the outline for today, so I will let her take over for the beginning of the call, and we'll go from there. So, it's all you, Arunima. Okay, Bobby, should you share the screen or? Uh... Okay, um, so you... should I share? Okay, okay, I'm going with uh, sharing the screen. Perfect. Okay, so uh, the starting with the policy. So, if any of you want uh, to do of conduct, so you can go through the introductions. So, first we have to say yourself. Arunima, we're losing you. Are you there? Oh, we can't hear you. Uh, sorry, I think my internet went off. Let me share the screen again. Okay, so I have someone at the door. Please give me a minute. Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so sorry for the interruption. I had someone at the door. Okay, so starting with the introductions. Uh, first, we have Tripur. Hi everyone. Hi Bobby. Hi Arunima. Um, I just want Arunima to go over the GitHub, read the docs page. I've updated it. Oh, okay. Just give me a minute. Oh yeah, we have to do that too, Aruna. I forgot about the. Yeah, yeah. And that but will come that in the AI. And the deliverables. So yeah, uh, for this week, yeah. uh, I've made a table that what task I have to do, and by what time I will be completed, and by that I will tick box all my progress. And uh, in the comment section, I will I have mentioned what I will be discussing in the meetings, and what will the things will be uh, as i uh, was working with the uh, working on the standard guide I, I realized that 
uh, I cannot do it in a week because it's a very lengthy uh, guide and uh, I have to come up with uh, like I can only do it in like in the sidelines and while I'm working on Solang because I will not be able to update it like I should like as I like update it like complete it first and then go to the Solang so I thought like completing it section wise so this week I will uh, taking the step sections in which I will include a step about like steps for creating a user guide then I will go in detail I'm already working on it uh, if you all want I can share and uh, moving on to the second task for this week I have is meeting with Solana as I was not able to set up so long uh, so long in my computer so yeah I will be joining their next meeting I was not well this week sorry guys and uh, so no worries. can yeah. I just ask a quick question what yeah. was the problem when you tried to set up so long Actually, I have a Linux, uh, like I'm, I'm using uh, Pop OS. So when I was setting up, I was not able to uh, give the path. And if I, I also mentioned the path, then also I was not able to like uh, get the file open. So I was getting issues on that. And uh, for me, uh, the uh, like even though I know tech, after that also I was not able to set up Solang properly. I have, I've tried it multiple times. I don't know what the problem is coming so, so the next would week, you say in your opinion it's a user guide issue or a product issue i will say it is a user guide issue because awesome. like all all the people who are uh, not able to like understand technical language and who are first timers will not be able to like if one if i can show you the like uh, screen is share it for a yeah, second yeah, sure sure go ahead uh, just, just uh, is it visible? Yes. So yes, yeah, uh, uh, the first thing about Solang, which I was like installing it, I was uh, not able to see like Solang compiler and binary and like all these things. Then we are going from uh, directly how we can download it. Then everything is very mixed up. Like for uh. For Mac, Mac OS, they have specifically done it. But if you go further, for Linux, they have just uh, given this, but not mentioned because everything is mentioned for Mac OS. Then we have to, uh, on Linux, we have a permission to execute this. But after that, uh, we have nothing, like no, what will be the like outcome? We have no pictures or any screenshot, like uh, how we can confirm that this is the right thing that we are doing. So I wanted like uh, we should include a screenshot after and also uh, after that and also like um, uh, like separate all the downloading process like first of all mentioning the Mac OS then after that uh, second will be Linux then after that Microsoft because as I was going further I was getting more and more confused. Uh, the first step was downloaded from Google. I was not able to understand from like uh, what the person is talking about because uh, as someone who don't know anything about tech and that person reads this they will be very confused but if we go further then also I was really confused like how I should confirm that it is set up or not so yeah then also in the op like they have mentioned the options then after that there are no screenshot in uh, in like uh, I must mention this like also that uh, they have mentioned that step one installing the LLVM libraries uh, for like extra patches. Uh, so here also when I was downloading this and after starting the part I was not able to confirm if I'm doing right and then I got uh, error. So yeah, I will be discussing with uh, that with the Solang team. And also in the step two again the same thing. How should we confirm it is building or not? Like if you are not in tech and you are the first timer, then how will you confirm this? So these are the things that I found like missing in this thing, in the installing part. Okay, no, no, could you, uh, could you go back to sharing your screen? Cause I wanted to point something out to everybody. And, and great, that was a great analysis. I found the same thing when I was doing the two fabric courses, setting them up took more time than it should. Yeah. 
Um, it was ridiculous. It took like days to set it up and, and minutes to do the course. Um, but could you go back to sharing that screen? Uh, Bobby, are you telling me? No, no, the sh screen we were just on with the Solang um, user guide. Oh, oh, okay. This one? Because I wanted to point something out. If everybody will look on this screen, um, on the bottom left, it says read the docs. Yes. So here's the thing, and, and, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but read the docs just takes the GitHub repository and puts some bells and whistles on paragraphs and formatting and throws it into this uh, format. We're noticing that there's no screenshots that happen through this process. There's no really checking to see if it works, except for by the actual users. Um, and is this what people are finding? I, again, because this is where they want us. They want us to be able to have the community using the same, whether it's make the docs, read the docs, Sphinx, whatever, using the same one of these to get the best outcome. So that's what we as the task force have to come up with saying, we don't like read the docs because it doesn't do screenshots and there's no way to check to see if it works. Or we like make the docs better because, so that's basically when we say GitHub read the docs section or committee, that's basically the decisions you're making. So you're not gonna be responsible for checking every projects, reader or creating user guides, we're more charged with just figuring out which one works. Does that make sense? Yeah. And uh, so what do you think me, of Deborah? Read the Doc, personally? <laughs> <laughs> so um, you're suggesting that we should work on, uh, like make the docs rather than read the docs. Well, OK. Um, here, let me share my screen for a second, um, if that's possible. I'm going to go to, where was it? Should I share the link of the same documentation? That would be great, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is it. Okay, let me just go, where was I going to get rid of this? I just need a minute to get to Yeah, one. it is in the text <laughs> section. Okay, where was I? Now. And I'm going to turn the, I swear, turn the meeting back over to Arun. <laughs> um, I'm looking for the analysis we did way back when, and I still think it's on here. Yep, here we go. Okay, so these are the mentorship projects that need documentation help after we're done. Um, uh, here we go. Okay, so this is what each project uses. So they're all using the read the docs. Some of them are using make the docs. Some are using just the docs. Um, and so paid the the technical documentation user markdown materials for docs. So this is the one that Hyperledger now pays for. So when everybody, all these other projects created all these GitHub repositories, Hyperledger gave them no guidance telling them how to create user guides. It just said, use your GitHub repository, create something for the users so that people can use your product. Um, so again, we're charged with trying to get that into some sort of templated help. Um, and now, so the um, Hyperledger community has paid for this materials for doc. So what we're trying to do so is take this, and I'm not even sure what this is, I, probably directions on how to use materials for, yeah. Uh, so this is the make the docs uh, webpage. Um, it talks about how it works, what you need to do. So I don't know if this helps you at all, but what we're trying to accomplish with the task force is to get 
I guess, a user guide for the maintainers that uses make the docs or that paid tooling policy as a suggestion for taking GitHub repositories and creating user guides. So I guess the next step for this task force would try to be, since you're familiar with the Solang read the docs, I would just see if you could take the GitHub repository and run it through make the docs and see the difference. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I don't know how hard it is. I don't think it's very hard to run the GitHub repository through the make the docs, but the analysis would be priceless. Yeah, okay, I will do that. <laughs> um, if it's not too much, yeah, I don't want you wasting hours and hours and hours. It should just be a simple, you know, let's see if it works and, and then just compare the two. And see. Yeah, it will be my first time to do that. And I will try that if it works for me for uh, like in uh, like if I'm able to do it in a shorter period of time, then uh, if it it will, I will be able to set up it. Otherwise, I will take the help of the Solang community. They, if they yeah, can it is that. not your job to get their documentation to work. They yeah. need to get their documentation to work. It's your job to make suggestions on how that documentation should appear. Okay. And again, I like your idea of screenshots a lot. I think they are helpful. I found with the fabric documentation, it would say do something and it would never let, it wouldn't show you the end result of a, a successful uh, line yeah. of code. It would show you if you got an error, but it wouldn't say, you know, oh, this is what it looks like after you're finished. This is the prompt you'll get and you can continue. I, I agree with you a hundred percent. Exactly, and uh, that was make that makes the user more confused. Like they, if they get the error or if they don't get anything, then they will be like, "Okay, is this set up or not? How will we check?" Exactly. It? <laughs> so, and there is no like a way that there is written like uh, the first code that we always run is "Hello world." Now there is nothing like that that if we can check if this is running, that means you are go good to go. So yeah, yeah, we can also add something like that. Perfect. Thank you. I'm going to be quiet now. Aruma, can you share back uh, the screen? Yeah, yeah, sure. And thank you so much, Tripur and Bobby. I can so much relate to your problem because I was interning with Solana when I was an MH fellow and I faced the same problem. So I can relate a lot. Give me a minute as it is loading. Uh, so uh, next we have uh, uh, Gianluca. So Gianluca, you can go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes. Yes. Hello, everyone. Do you hear me? Hi. Yeah, yeah. We can hear okay. you very clearly. Perfect. OK. Uh, so. Um, Thank you, Bobby and Arunima, uh, for your messages uh, on GitHub, on um, LinkedIn. Uh, so, Bobby, you, you shared me um, to a couple of uh, links about uh, existing uh, documentation on uh, maintainers, um, uh, on GitHub documentation maintainers. I read um, all the, the links, all the documentation existing. And also, I planned um, uh, some activity for the next uh, weeks. Um, I I've written um, um, a list of uh, a list of uh, activity in my uh, template page, and these uh, I don't know if you uh, can uh, can uh, yeah I can oh thank you that one yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, on the bottom of the, the page, yes, uh, um, I have <clears throat> planned some uh, activities. Uh, the first two or three weeks uh, are about training, a training stage. Um, and a question is um, about the documentation. Uh, what are the uh, most important goals uh, for the end of this project, because I see now the documentation is uh, is uh, there is a documentation on uh, um, on GitHub. Uh, I 
I, I have an idea about the improvement, but uh, I'd like to share with you um, how can we, we improve uh, that, the existing documentation. I don't know if the question is, is clear. I hope you don't mind. I'm just going to rephrase this question just to make sure we have it correctly. So you you want to... I, even, I didn't get it properly. Yeah, so, so basically, uh, Gianluca, you want to... Um, yeah, I'm not sure what your question is. Uh, could you rephrase it? If you want, I can share my screen and... Uh, try to repeat the... <laughs> sure, of okay, course. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, this is my screen. I don't know if you, if you see my screen. Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is one of the, that one and the, the second one are the existing documentation about the maintainers. I already read uh, that documentation. This is the link that, that you shared, Bobby, mm -hmm. and thank you. And I think uh, I have some idea um, on how to improve the existing documentation. So when you say existing documentation, you're talking about this documentation to teach maintainers how to set up their GitHub repositories. Yes, right. Perfect. I, I was confused. I thought you were talking about, again, the other GitHub section with the read the docs. And I'm like, no, no, no. We need to make sure the maintainers have all the crap in there that's needed for the read the docs. And that's this part. So great job. Um, and any suggestions, again, would be appreciated. So I'm going to, again. Um, so just to sum up what this task force section committee is doing um, is taking um, the existing materials that help maintainers create their GitHub repositories for their projects and making mm -hmm. it so it's a little bit more standardized for the community and uh, easier for them to make sure everything's in there. I do have a question for both uh, Gianluca mm -hmm. and Tapur. If we wanted to automate this with screenshots. Would the screenshots have to be part of their GitHub repository? I guess it would have to be. Yeah, it have to be. Like uh, that will also help the people who like stumble upon the GitHub repository. So they will also be like able to set up whatever they are doing and get like making it more visualized will make uh, like the user or the person who is reading it more interested in what like results are showing so yeah you will be able to read okay if i run this thing this will happen okay if i if i do this this will happen so yeah yes in, but i don't that... think they're going to do that then we can add a link like uh, go to this link you will be able to see what will happen if you run the this code that we can also do that uh-huh and uh, like in add a google uh, drive like image something like share of that so yeah we can do that mm -hmm. and uh, our question is we, we have uh, two pages one is uh, the, the first one is the um, the existing uh, guidelines about maintainers and the second one is an example that each maintainer can can use to as a template. Okay, can copy that one in the um, own uh, repo. Uh, the question is, uh, it uh, how can we improve the existing maintain uh, the existing um, pages? One idea uh, could be um, adding some, um, uh, for example, uh, documentation about GitHub comments uh, and also using screenshot. Um, other one could be extended the existing documentation. Or I don't know if uh, you have a, a other idea about that. So 
So I'm going to jump in again. Um, my idea for this, <clears throat> again, if I'm a maintainer, so I like to take it from the beginning. So if we go back and think about a project that's in a mentorship pro pro project that's going to be its own lab eventually, that's basically the starting point for all of this. So if I'm a, a company and I'm going to put my project into the Hyperledger open source community, the first step is to create a GitHub repository for a lab. And there should be a step mm -hmm. for that somewhere. Um, maybe it's the first one, what each that, that copy that. Um, and then once that, that GitHub repository is set up in a lab, that's when people can start adding maintainers and doing whatever and, 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 and working towards getting the lab to incubation. And that incubation GitHub repository, I don't know yet. I haven't, we haven't done the work yet, but might be the same as the GitHub repository uh, for the lab. Entry into lab might be the same GitHub structure as entry into incubation. I don't know. I haven't compared them. But then when that project's in incubation and it's going to be moved into a graduated status, that GitHub repository, I'm sure, needs more information in it than it did when it started as a lab. So that's kind of the user guides we need. So we need a user guide for maintainer. Maintainers, this is your lab information. Here's the link to get the sample maintainers GitHub repository working. And yeah, we need to make sure that that is correct. Then the next step is, all right, you're done with your lab. You want to get your lab into incubation. Here's the next step for maintainers. This is what you have to do with your GitHub repository to get the roles and get everything ready for incubation. And then the next step is graduation. And here's what you have. So it's kind of like a user guide for GitHub management through the life cycle. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, I, I, I try to repeat um, to, to, to understand if uh, I, uh, I, I have right understood uh, what you say. Uh, so it's important to differentiate the um, GitHub um, guideline uh, for the different stages. Uh, exactly, different la life cycles. Okay, okay labs, uh, incubation, and also uh, the graduated. So um, this is uh, everyone. Could you click governing documents um, on the uh, page? Because I can show him the life cycle real quick. Uh, Who's ever showing this? Uh, GitHub the, right, the governing documents is the second file. Who's screen sharing? Uh, I think uh, Gianluca is sharing the screen. Oh. So maybe you okay. can just click on yeah, the. I can. Uh, okay. No, Sorry. just that was awesome. everything was in Italian. That was so cool. Sorry. Okay, uh, no worries. We just wanted you to go back to sharing your screen. I just wanted you to uh, hit something. My screen. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. I okay. Think your okay. Screen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So click up on governing documents in the uh, left hand side uh, menu. Um, here. Down here, down on the down in the. No, not there. Over. Get rid of that. Um, above maintainers guidelines, you'll see governing documents. Yeah. Up one. Up up up. up. The second folder. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. there you go. Uh, project life cycle. Okay, first project life cycle. That one? Uh, or do the, uh, yeah, that one we can read. Yeah, that one. And scroll down a little bit. There you go. So that's the project life cycle. Okay. So a GitHub repository, there's ones needed at the proposal. That's when you mm -hmm. go into labs. That's what a lab proposal is. And then when you go out of proposal to incubation, your GitHub repository should have some more things according to best practices that should be included. Same thing when it goes to graduated. So these are the three stages that maintainers mm -hmm. need guidance on 
um, proposal incubation and graduated um, that their GitHub repositories change as they move through those cycles. Okay. Okay. So the, the, the first the, the first goal is to determine the difference between GitHub in different steps. Exactly. Right? Like what's the okay. difference between a lab GitHub repository and mm -hmm. an incubated projects GitHub repository? B. Okay. Well. Okay. That would so more be what the main and again, this is the this is where they go right now for this information. And this is not user friendly. I wouldn't have to like right now, I wouldn't know to go to maintainers guideline and copy that GitHub repository. No one's telling me to do that. And I found through the times that that's a lot of that's the most question I get when new companies are coming into the community and they want to set up. They're like, how do I do this? How do I set up a lab? You know, like the mm -hmm. They need guidance in those three three project statuses. What they need. Okay, so so with the first step could be could be right to study for uh, the next two or three weeks. Would be right to study a uh, background of GitHub and also about this life life cycle uh, diving in. Yes. Okay. So I, I think because I, once you set up your lab GitHub mm -hmm. repository, if you set it up correctly, there might not be, I don't know, there might not be anything you have to do um, for incubation. Um, you know, you just might have a more robust GitHub repository because of your work. I don't know if you have to add a category or take a, I have no idea. I, you know, so that's what we have to figure out. Okay. Okay. Clear. Now it's clear. Okay, and after after that we can, uh, for example, uh, we can propose um, a first goal, uh, a first uh, goal, and uh, also uh, uh, design a, um, a new um, a new version of uh, uh, GitHub repository uh, according to um, what we can uh, we can uh, learn during these two or three weeks. Exactly. Okay. Okay, so about that line, we can um, we can talk about that uh, in uh, two weeks, and after one uh, another weeks, we can uh, talk about uh, um, a, a first design, a first version of design yes. of the uh, of the improved improved um, documentation. And mm -hmm. and also, I will have Tracy who. Um, has probably set most of this up initially, come to our call in two weeks so that we can ask her questions of if there's anything that she expects from us that we're not covering. Oh, that's great. That's great. Uh, our feedback uh, also for, from him is, uh, is, very, is very good. Thank you. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah, so I'll make sure that um, I invite Tracy. Okay, perfect. So the, the first uh, two steps, uh, in my opinion, could be... Uh, First one to uh, study and learn about background GitHub and also the uh, existing documentation on that graph that I see uh, now. Yes. The, the, these two three step proposal uh, yep. it should be a, a um, lab incubation and graduated and difference uh, between the three uh, steps. And second uh, second one we can propose a, a first design of the improvement and share with uh, Tracy about, uh, uh, according to have a, a feedback about that. Correct. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, now the question, you, you answered my question, so um, I, I'm, uh, I'm happy. No, <laughs> good. Uh, so I don't know if you want to go ahead or you have a question uh, to me. Do you have other, other questions? Because Aruma, you um, asked me to um, write a, a, a short list about the next steps. Um, yeah, I... yeah, just to, so that you know we can have uh, regular discussions and stay updated with whatever is going on in the various communities. It was just for that purpose. So yeah, I don't have any questions. I just uh, like send a message to everyone regarding that. 
regarding framing the timeline so that we all can stay updated about what is going on and if required we can help each other also so okay. that's it and i think yeah yeah next we have agnes agnes okay, uh, you. you can go ahead and introduce yourself all right uh, hi everyone um, i think it's very uh, impressive to hear what everyone has been trying to do over the last couple of weeks uh, so i think i'll start uh, oh yeah let me introduce myself <laughs> my name is agnes um at the back end developer and technical writer and i'm supposed to help out with user guide yeah so i think i'll begin with uh what uh i'm not sure who who shared about uh checking the solar docs and noticing there is in screenshot and all so uh, my my observation has been uh, for the graduation project for some reason i've just been <laughs> looking at those they seem to have a sort of structure so i have looked at indi arrive i'm currently looking at sotut uh they seem to have a structure where they have a general introduction to the project and then the features of the project and then they have now the getting started guides how to install and all i'm yet to install sotut and see whether i'll have any problems in the event that I do, I'll update us. Uh, so I don't know whether that's something that should be across all the projects and we uh, both be telling us about the whole flow. I don't know whether that's something that can help in us guiding the other projects that are not graduated. Um, for in terms of user guides, I got a bit stuck because the more I think about it, the more I realize that every aspect of the project has a user guide component to it. So I'm not very sure exactly how to help in terms of user guides, since the onboarding team has a user guide component, uh, just like Gianluca was sharing, sounds like there's going to be a user guide component. So I'm not very sure what the exact uh, tasks and activities would be in terms of user guides and also keeping in mind, uh, I think there's a whole discussion about personas and all. So um, I haven't found a clear way among all those things in terms of exactly what to do in terms of user guides. So maybe someone or maybe Bobby or someone else might have a better idea. Bobby, do you want to say anything regarding that? Well, do you think it's time to go into our next section and tell everybody the good news? Yeah, yeah, actually. Okay, um, wonderful. So uh, I'm going to probably share my screen again. I don't even know what's on it. I won't, no, I'm not going to share my screen yet. Um, so we were talking with um, last week in this group a little bit about AI and chat GBT and a few other software programs that assist in creating presentations and creating um, videos that would be automated. So again, there's like um, Agnes just said, the idea of creating user guides for this community is overwhelming. There is no way that it can be done like by a group of people unless you are paid full time and it's what you do full time. Um, it is impossible. Every little nuance needs a user guide. So again, last week I took a little risk when I brought up the subject of um, AI and using AI in our user guides, but I wanted to see what we would come up with. So I showed you guys a little workflow and I'm going to, now I'm going to share my screen to see if I can find that. over here put this over here and share my screen okay so the you the workflow that i suggested was something that i picked up 
from a class I took two weeks ago. And I've been taking classes on AI, trying to find a good way to teach this stuff and a good way to organize this AI curriculum. And this group nailed it. If you want to take a class I took, the company is called Mission uh, Impact Academy, M-I-A. And it's it's just, it, it looks like a women's group, but men can join. Um, so again, they they have the really, as far as I guess, some, some really uh, first rate curriculum on AI. So from what I took from their session is, um, I call it a workflow. So if you're going to be using AI productively in your job, you need to create workflows, which start with the prompts. So what we did for an example last week was we took a prompt and the prompt I put was, create instructions for a maintainer's guide to set up a GitHub repository for a lab, which is kind of, uh, Jen Luca, what you're kind of looking at doing. Um, and so that's all I put in chat GBT. As an educator and a curriculum developer, I don't like to leave it up to chat GBT. So in my workflows, when I'm doing creating curriculum, I like to give it the outline too, because I like to really kind of direct where the um, stuff is going to be what, what's going to be filled in rather than just come up with whatever chat GBT decides. So, but for our example last week, I just put in instructions to set up a maintainer's guide for a lab and it came up with this. So then I took this information that it, that chat GBT gave me, which I'm going to call the result. And I put that in a program called Pictionary and I got a presentation with graphics, music, you get the idea. So it created an entire presentation from the prompt results from ChatGBT. Then I took the same results and put it in a program called Gamma and it created a presentation. So that one was a video and this one is a presentation. And you can edit these and whatever. Um, I don't want to download it. I already have it on my computer. What is the problem? So it created a nice little um, presentation. It took kind of the same information from the other presentation. Oh, I'm going back and forth between the pictures. Sorry. So it, it created a presentation and then it created a video. So that is a workflow. So it took it from all the way from an idea all the way through to a presentation in under 10 minutes. So basically, I thought that that was pretty cool. And I thought everybody should try and play with that. Um, and I don't know if anybody did on their own do that. Um, but coincidentally, after our meeting last week, I'm in the head of the mentorship program and David Boswell the director of Hyperledger, one of the directors at Hyperledger, and Robert Reeves, who is the head of strategic development of the Linux Foundation, were on an email that I was included on talking about how the Linux Foundation and all of its community projects might want to start the discussion on how to use AI in their work. So you know me, I'm a little, you know, I have no modesty or inhibitions. I reached out directly to the head of the Linux Foundation Strategic Development and said, this group is doing it now. He was so impressed he set up a meeting with me, which I had last week, and I told him about what we did. And he wants to incorporate a workflow like this to all of the Linux Foundation's documentation. He wants to be the leader in the Linux Foundation of using AI for user documentation. And I was very excited about that. So I told him, that I would bring it back to this group, which we're doing right now. And I have another meeting with him directly on Thursday. I don't know if I'm still going to have that meeting on Thursday because Min, David, and Robert, and I, are, and, and hopefully Arunima and anyone else who wants to come, um, have a meeting and it's on the public calendar right after this um, in 15 minutes um, for him to discuss his ideas with the Hyperledger people. They don't know. I don't know if they even know that I met with him already. Um, and I have another meeting with him on Thursday to show some results 
of what the Hyperledger Documentation Task Force is doing with AI. So I'm encouraging everyone on this call to try to do something so that we can say to Robert Reeves and the people over at the Linux Foundation, and then he wants us to bring, if we have a good system, he wants us to deliver this in um, presentations to the Linux Foundation, to the open source people, to the member summit. I mean, there's opportunities for us to go. Again, I don't really travel much off the East Coast, but I mean, there's travel opportunities all over the world for this one. So this is this is exciting, and this is an opportunity like I've never had in my life either. So I'm very, very stoked about this um, and the meeting after this meeting. Um, so Agnes, this kind of is not really falling on you, but kind of falling on you for your opinion on what do you think all about AI and this kind of workflow and the user guides, like, cause you've been looking into it. What do you, do you think it's possible that we could do something? Yeah, of course it's possible. Uh, so I think I like the idea of the workflow since you can't really write user guides for all the projects. Um, for a start, I think just uh, top of my head, I think what we can do for a first phase just to test it out is identify the different uh, user guide areas that we already have at this point. For example, I would think Gianluca has one um, and maybe the Solang uh, team as well. And then we sort of uh, create the templates because I don't think we'll create the full guides or maybe even the guides for, like you're saying, for, for the projects to move from labs to the next stage and then we can see how we are able to come up with that then that can be part of what you can maybe tell the rest of the hyperledger team or management if i may call them yeah i think that's a good place to start yeah that sounds good what do you think aruna and what are your overall thoughts on this new opportunity I am just, you know, loving it because I have been using AI, I don't know, for so long for organizing my code, for getting, you know, debugging my code and anything you say, use AI tools a lot, be chat GPT for, or some other tools to make presentations and even for, uh, you know, organizing my tasks, I use a lot of AI tools. So I'm very, very excited about it because I know how easy it makes our lives. So yeah i am very excited about it and let's see what uh we can do with it but i would love love if we can present something in thursday or whenever you know we have the presentation so i'm very excited well, about here's it. one of the things that i just remembered he said in our meeting that as the linux foundation goes they are interested in like for instance an easier example to explain it is zoom so the Linux Foundation paid for Zoom on a regular plan that everybody had so that all the Zoom rooms for the calendar of public meetings were available and they were, you know, done all, you know, whatever you had to do to them. Um, after using Zoom for so long, it became cost ineffective to do it that way. So now we stepped up our subscription to Zoom. So now if you go to the calendar of public meetings and open a meeting, it's automatically recorded. It's automatic. All this stuff is automatically done because we've stepped up our subscription. So Robert Reeves from the Linux Foundation is like, I know the Linux Foundation is going to have to get in uh, relationships with some of these tools for AI and incorporate them in our systems. I don't, and he's like, I don't know what those tools would look like um, or what they are. So I just mentioned the tools that I learned in my, you know, seminar last week was Picturary, Chat GBT, and Gamma. I'd like to see what tools you guys use. So if you want to take this same exercise with this prompt and see with your tools what you can come up with so we can compare them. And then in the meaning, um, Thursday, we'll, we'll have a, a, we have the meeting in a few minutes. First, we can say, this is what we're doing. We are comparing, we're taking the same prompt, 
in, uh, instructions for our maintainers to set up a GitHub repository. We're taking that same prompt and we're running it through different tools to see which one has the better outcome. That's that's something that they'd be very interested in. So everybody here want to try that or? Yeah, that will be perfect, Bobby. I have the perfect AI tool to share with all of you. It's for like, uh, if you are a technical writer and you want to mention the references of the people you are using the work and everything in chat JPT, there is one thing that uh, it does not give you the links of the website, they, uh, the, cop the content it copies from. So yeah, uh, I have one very perfect tool to uh, share with you all. So should I share it now or should I share it? Uh, in the meeting itself um you should share it now that would be great because i don't know again we're not running the next meeting they're running it so you know i'm not uh presenting anything for that but uh i just want to finish this and then i'll let you share your screen because i want to make sure we're on the same so idea for user guides for uh crap what's today's date today is 7 24. um Okay. So everybody agrees that they'll give that a whirl and there's the prompt right there, instructions for maintainers guide. Uh, the best. Ah. Okay, so that's there for everybody if they need to reference what we're trying to do this week with the AI. So I used ChatGBT, Pictory and Gamma. Go out there and try something else. You don't have to just do presentations or that. I just, this is the only things that I knew. So I put them there. <sighs> Update. And now I will stop sharing. Um, and I'm very Bobby, can you just share? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, can we just <laughs> share the link of the meeting that we had, that you have uh, after this meet? Because I would love to join that meeting and know about sure, what the I'll opportunity. show everybody where it is uh so that they can get it so hold yes on. Bobby I always go up to here oh it's not in the calendar of public meeting it's my calendar is that correct let me see Uh, no, it's not on the public calendar. Let me grab the link. Hold on. Calendar there. Hold on. Okay, I'm putting it in the chat right now. Oh. That didn't work. Try that. And again, that meeting starts in five minutes. So does anybody have any more questions on today's meeting? No, Bobby. But thank you for the opportunity, Bobby. This is really great. Um, and yes. what's the, what's, I'm going to leave it up to Arunima if we want to meet, if we do get um, some time with Robert Reeves and the Linux Foundation on Thursday, um, I had mentioned that maybe we should meet Wednesday. Um, so I'll let Arunima set that up if in fact we are presenting to him on Thursday, which I think we are, but let's make sure in the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So just let me know where I can get the uh, links for all these meetings. Yep. Okay. Perfect. All right. So I'll see either you next week or in a few minutes.
uh, just in a few minutes i will be joining the next uh, next call I, I will be there okay and everybody great work thank you for doing this we're going to have so much fun when we present these all over the world and i can't wait to meet you guys on these stages and i'm looking forward to it that's great. Thank you so much, Bobby. And I think the next meet we have a Wednesday or Thursday. Um, well, it depends on what happens in the next meeting. If they if we are presenting okay. Thursday, I think we should regroup on Wednesday. Okay, okay. And we can figure out when That's and what's perfect. best to confirm. Yeah. That's perfect. I am leaving the meeting and joining the next one. And okay, and, and, yeah. and Arunva, I just Thanks. have to put this out there. Um, I might be counting on you a lot in the next two weeks because my daughter's about to have a baby on August 1st and I will be going to Boston to help her with that. So I might not be able to run the meeting next week or the week after, uh, depending on when she has the baby. <laughs> no problem, Bobby. I will take care of that and I will, I will try to manage know. as much as I can. I will let you know. <laughs> okay. And... Uh, congratulations to her. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I know it's fantastic. It's my first grandson. I'm so nervous. Congratulations, oh, Bobby. So <laughs> Yay. Congratulations. Yeah, very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> anyway, so I'll see you in a few minutes. Yeah, sure.